This is from Jeff Koch. If we evolved from apes, why are there still apes? In other words, why didn't all apes become humans? Well, it's probably similar reason that there's still creationists and everyone hasn't converted to theistic evolution yet. Um, evolution, evolution is a tree. It branches off. And just because you have things that are higher up in the tree, it doesn't mean there's not lower forms. We see representations of lower forms of animals. Bacteria were the first uh, single cell, or one of the first single cell. They're, they're still around. So in the same way, we see primitive forms that are still in existence, that have not evolved because um, environmental circumstances were not right in order for evolution to occur. Certain, um, certain species stayed within their niche and did not evolve, or evolved more in a parallel manner, did change into something, quote unquote, of a higher form like man. So that's why we still see, that's why we still see apes. I would say man did not evolve from apes or an ape-like creature. Um, all of that takes place in the imagination, and in artists' imagination especially. Uh, there simply is no evidence. I mean, apes are still having babies. Monkeys are still having babies. Humans are still having babies. Uh, why don't we ever see this happen? Why do we always have to depend on long ago and far away? Evolution is a fairy tale for grown-ups. It's nothing more. There's no evidence for it at all, uh, and so there's, there's no reason to compromise the clear teachings of, of the Scripture. Plus, there are genetic barriers that would prevent such a thing from happen, happening. And going from apes to humans is a relatively minor change, actually, compared to going from a rock to a human, which is what the evolution theory ultimately teaches. And the rock came from nothing, which is what they ultimately teach, too, at least in the textbooks that I have. And I show that on video number one and two of my series pretty clearly. So uh, the question of why do we still have apes, I know the evolutionist answer is typically, well, you know, because we do didn't come from apes, we both came from the common ancestor, but they're, they're straining at a gnat and swallowing a camel. They do teach we came from an ape-like ancestor. Every one of the bits of evidence that's ever been used for this, like Lucy or uh, Neanderthal man, or I cover all that on video two of my series, all of them have been proven wrong. Uh, they'll keep something in the textbooks for years, like the Nebraska man was in there for 40 years. All they found was one tooth. One tooth. In the textbooks for 40 years as evidence for evolution, later it turned out to be the tooth of a pig. Uh, there are just many examples like that. Lucy, three feet tall, obviously a chimpanzee-type animal, not missingly. Plus, the bigger picture that they're missing totally is they always, you know, we don't see it happening today, that's for sure. So they say, well, let's look at the fossils. Let's look at the fossil record. I say, wait, wait, wait. There is no fossil record. There is no such thing as a fossil record. There are a bunch of bones in the dirt. Now, you're putting your interpretation on them, but it's not a record. There are no dates on them. And if you find bones in the dirt, you don't know those bones represent an animal that had any kids, let alone different kids. So I think evolution is purely a fairy tale. There's no evidence for it whatsoever. All right, we're going to go ahead and extend the argument for two minutes on either side. So if you'd like to uh, revisit oh, okay, some certainly. of the points thank, you made. All right, thank you. Um, I want to bring this to your attention. This is also on my website. If you go to the links, again, if you go to links at... Uh, faithreason.org. Um, one of the first links is list of creationist arguments here. And it's quite well done and it's quite exhaustive. You have a table of context here with a number of points. And each one of these points is then expanded. It goes over many issues, theology, biology, uh, the fossil record, etc. And it, it's many pages. It's very well done. And then you can go to a specific topic this one here is the faint, uh, faint young sun paradox, and it has the claim and the source, the response, links, so you can even do more research and acknowledgement. So it's quite excellent as far as addressing creationist arguments, which uh, Dr. Hovind just brought up as far as the lack of evidence. Um, I would take issue that there is an abundance, and the fossil record is one of the strongest evidences uh, matter of fact, 300 individuals, 300 individuals of Lucy have been found. And another excellent site, which you can go to and research yourself on my links page, is this is a, a hominid species timeline. It also shows many of the actual finds. And many of these have occurred within our lifetime. And what's happening is you're finding more and more intermediate points. It's all being filled in. 
and Dr. Hovind mentioned evidence being found. Well, the evidence is, is supporting evolution more and more. You can see the many intermediate forms that have been found, and again, many of these in our lifetime, such as uh, Lucy and the Tang baby, that was one of the early ones, and of course, Homo erectus. And as far as evolution, everyone can see a microevolution. We see change. We see the wolf has evolved into the dog, and there are many breeds and species of dog that have evolved. Dr. Hoven, two minutes. Okay. Um, the, all of the evidences that I'm aware of, and I think I've studied all of us, I can't believe he's still mentioning the Tang baby. That was proven wrong in 1973. It uh, cannot possibly be a missing link in humans. But uh, the evidence that's really studied, like the Neanderthals, for instance, about 300 of those have been found. Their brains are larger than ours. Uh, they gave the same skull to nine different artists and said, what did it look like? They got nine different answers. What do you want it to look like? Do you want it more ape-like or more human-like? Hey, we're artists. We can do whatever you want with it, okay? Uh, Jack Cuazzo, uh, who's coming to speak at our conference this May, our creation conference, is one of the world's experts on the Neanderthals. He went to Europe and actually, with an x-ray machine, he's a dentist, okay? He x-rayed the skulls of the Neanderthals that are on display over there. They let him have them and x-ray them. One of them had the jaw one inch out of the socket and the maxillary bones tilted out to make it look more ape-like. He said, guys, I'm a dentist. This guy wouldn't live 30 seconds. I mean, his jaw is an inch out of the socket. Put the jaw back and it becomes a normal human. Well, they tried to kill Dr. Coazzo for exposing the fraud of the Neanderthals. Uh, after the flood, the Bible says people lived to be, you know, 400 years old for a while. And it's just a biological fact that the bones of your eyebrow and the bones of your head never stop growing. So the Neanderthals were simply really old humans, people who were living probably past 200. Um, and as far as Homo erectus, that one has changed names quite a few times. Uh, Pithecanthropus erectus, I believe, was the original name of it. Uh, here's the Tang child. 1973, it was proven it cannot be a missing link. Um, so I've got all of the so-called cavemen talked about in my video number two. Uh, or you get the book by Jack Cuazzo, Buried Alive, or the book uh, uh, Bones of Contention by Marvin Lubinow, who studied all of the actual, uh, actual uh, skeletons and said, look, these guys, these are not missing links. They're just unusual uh, monkeys or animals. Plus, I'd like to point out, obviously, finding bones in the dirt is not evidence of anything. Again, you don't know. You couldn't prove they had any children. So if the argument's about Genesis history or myth, I think Genesis stands. It's not been proven wrong by some bone you found in the dirt. Thank you.